Well, now I got nothing to talk about. Damn it. We'll find something. I believe it. And we have advertisement, 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 advertisement. We we always talk about what we do over the week. Yeah. This is like our first episode. We're all back. Yeah, absolutely. In a long time. Mm Mm-hmm. And we should be going live. Going live. There we go. And I'm showing we're going live. Is anybody in there to listen to us? And if not, oh no one's there. Oh no. Oh no. We're all hey, alone. Spencer, can you check? Can you check to see what's going on and make sure we got a good sound? Because last week we had some sound issues. <laughs> My baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. My baloney has a second name. Seems fine to me. M A Y E R. True story. My dad would not let us sing that song as kids because he actually did work at Oscar Mayer for a long time what? in the packing plant in Chicago. And he's like, A, you will never see that sing that song. B, you will never eat that product. <laughs> I mean, we always have to make stupid stuff. So, we are now at the pre-ramble, uh, episode 8, and um, what did we do this weekend? Oh, this weekend, uh, very unsatisfying role-playing session, um, worked, uh, and then a lot of chilling, a lot of chilling. Chilly or chillin'? Chillin', not chilling. Like Netflix and chill, or like, what are we talking here? <laughs> no, like hang out at the computer and drink and, and watch stuff. Okay. Mm. So being bored by yourself. <laughs> you could call it that. I wasn't bored, though. Mm. Okay, so you were just playing with yourself then. I, I was watching guys in Australia <laughs> drop anvils off of a 45-meter tower onto all sorts of crazy shit. Ooh, what was that? Uh, it's, uh, it's a channel called That's Ridiculous, and they just do... They're sort of like... Uh, God, what's that one that I follow? Um, Jesus Christ. Put me on the spot and then my brain stopped. Uh, it's like kind of like Dude Perfect, but not as as bro. Not, a, not, not much bro in there? Not, not as much bro in there. Uh, but they like to no, just do crazy cool. stuff. Like they had access to a 45 meter tower and they just dropped anvils off of them onto all sorts of things. Did the animals move when they fell? Like, did they have to like judge the distance and make sure, or did they just crane it up and hit really big things? Well, there's a tower there, so they'd have someone carry it to the top, and the guy would hold it out and drop it out on a. Uh, you know, they had a refrigerator, they had an old copy machine, they had a, a washer, sodas, all sorts of stuff. Like, how big of an animal are we talking about? I mean, is this is like twenty carried up this tower? Twenty kilos. In real in real See, numbers, what's that? Forty four yeah, pounds. Well, Okay. We're not. We're not metric. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not good enough for the metric system. We've already had that discussion. Oh God! Held our president in. <laughs> if only we had math teachers who could teach us the metric system, but sadly they don't oh. exist. Oh, you mean they're allowed to teach the metric system? Look, potato, potato. I know how education <laughs> works. All right. <laughs> this is getting slightly weird. <laughs> Check this out. See this little red thing right here? Nope. <laughs> See this red thing? No, I just see you. Yep. That right there uh-huh. is red hot popcorn. Really? This shit is the bomb. Oof. Like red hot's candy. Mm-hmm. I am uh, intrigued. Shit is good. We got this place called Hill City that's uh, a little bit north of us. And they make like gourmet popcorn and they like make a bunch of different weird and crazy stuff. And they make this red hot popcorn and it tastes like hot tamales. Mm. Or like red hot candy, and it's like the shit. Mm. And we're eating this the whole time. We're talking. I got so depressed just there because you said it tastes like hot tamales, and I was like, I love tamales. Oh, not tamales. wrong ones. Yeah, not those. The racially inappropriate the ones. The candy tamales. Got it. <laughs> All right, so John did nothing but sit in Netflix and chill with himself. <laughs> Seth, what'd you do for the week? Uh, I spent most of my week uh, dealing with a cold, um, so went to work, went home, slept for 14 hours, went back to work, that kind of stuff. But yesterday I was feeling well enough that I went to the local game store, Mishap Games, and hung out with my buddies, uh, Lee and Mark, 
and had a six hour paint jam uh, which was a blast so we split our time between uh, Mark who's building a converted throne of Everblight where rather than having it flying he's got the tentacles and face bursting out of the base it's totally cool um, and then I was teaching uh, teaching Lee how to do sort of quick color or quick value sketches and then glaze color on like Matt DiPietro so he could get his army painted quickly for some upcoming tournaments um, yeah so it's, it was a good way to spend some time and then uh, today was off hiking in the mountains for a little bit hanging with your homies hanging with, hanging with my homies the uh, the wife and the dog and rumor has it I'm gonna get another food delivery tonight so I am excited <laughs> is it gonna be tacos uh, I think it's gonna be Korean short ribs now, whenever she comes in, yeah. you got to make her say something. I will try every time, but the thing is, she tries to walk in as quietly as she can, so she, I can't do it. So if you guys see her, because you will see her before I see her since she's behind me, um, say something and I will make sure she says hi. And what's her name again? Alex. Alex, all right. So she is an unofficial member of the podcast just because she's the food delivery lady. I have a good life. Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. How about you, Gonzo? What have you been up to? Other than popcorn? Um, I went and made... Let's see, I... Uh, hmm. Worked a bunch. I think I could have um, saying. Welcome to the school year. Well, actually, it's been a lot of fun. Because um, I don't have to do like lesson plans. Just got to get the crap ready for the day before. Um, but then, let's see, I... Uh, we're doing our journeyman league, and so this is like week four, I think, where you get to change over and do theme lists. Nice. Right before you get to, right before you change casters, and so I'm playing Grimkin, and so of course I'm doing um, Dark Menagerie, so I've got everything going with that. Um, set that up, played a few games. Um, I tabled both my players. Uh, one of my guys, he's like super, super competitive and overthinks and everything, and tried to get. And tried to kill me and assassinate my caster, and I transferred, and he had some bad dice rolls, and so child walked, turned around, and just beat the crap out of her. Mm. I get the uh, mm. and then played a couple more games, had a lot of fun. Um, painted my lady rose. I was gonna do a bunch of painting yesterday, but the expansion for Guild Wars 2 came out <laughs> and so my ass has been on that all day and all night and all day and trying to get to the end of the story on that um, other than that um, I went and bought some new shirts I needed some new shirts for work um, made some new friends that's always good uh, yeah Talked to a couple more uh, studio, t not studio painters, but uh, professional painters. Yeah. And uh, talked to them about work. Nice. Um, Anybody I might know? Talk mm, you know Riot Girl? Yeah. Yeah. Her and I were talking about a bunch of Infinity stuff and what she does and et cetera, et cetera. Cool. That's my punk rock girl. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of the song. But, you know, we talked about that a bunch. Um, had a skunk spray our next-door neighbor's dog twice. Oh. No boy, no. Yeah, that's no point out. I mean, my corgi's okay. He's sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden his head pops up, and he starts, you know, his, his yippy bark. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And he starts freaking out, and he starts dancing around, the, looking around the room, and then he starts moving around the room, barking, and it's like really quick, short, yippy barps, barks. And... He comes in, hey, Congo, welcome back. Um, and he, like, runs outside to the door, and I go to the door and open it up, and I get hit by the stink of this, the uh, skunk, and I'm, like, slam in the door and, like, telling my dog to get inside, and then I, you know, put the thing on the door so nobody can come in, and I'm like, oh, there's no fucking way. Mm. And I was like, I mean, that was twice this week, so I'm hoping, like, it gets run over or just goes away. Because I'm not going to have any skunk in my house again. That doesn't sound good at all. Mm. Mm. Last year, my my beagle got hit in the face. Oh. 
and he came inside and he, of course he's all foaming at the mouth and stuff and he's like slinging it all over the house and rubbing it in the carpet and you know trying to get that smell off of him yeah and everything and so it's all in the living room carpet and it took weeks for that smell to get out of here our dog got sprayed last year uh, at Thanksgiving because you know that's what happens and um, he luckily didn't get in the mouth so he wasn't foaming but he walks up to us he just smells like burned tire and we're trying to figure out what's going on and then uh, my brother's girlfriend goes oh that's that's skunk he's been skunked and I'm like oh that makes sense and so I start taking him in back to get him washed and he sees the skunk and he starts to go for him again He's like, hey, Stripey, my best friend. <laughs> you introduced me to a whole new smell. Let's go hang out more. I'm like, get back here. Yes. Stupid. Ever since then, when he see when he smells skunks, he like his tail starts wagging. I'm like, I swear they're not your friends. <laughs> mm. No, that was horrible. It was like, ah, oh, so you could smell it, and it was. I mean, I just opened up the door just enough, and I was like, oh shit, and closed it really quick. Mm-hmm. And it was still in the house for hours. Yeah. Ugh. Hey, Crimson1919. Thanks for joining us. Um, I am, like, really super excited about sending out these dice to people. Um, these are pretty freaking cool. I mean... Can you hear them? How could we not hear them? It's sad you just said pop rocks and put your mouth right over the microphone. <laughs> Well, I divided them out. I've got you, your two sets, and then I've got the one, you know, one for everybody that's a patron and going to be so on and so forth. And then we got 20 left over. Cool. So for, we got our new fans that are coming in. Um, and if there's some people that, you know, don't, you know, because we have some people that are part of our patron that just give us money mm-hmm. and don't want a reward, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that'll be awesome. So we have some left over. Um, and I'll be getting those out the end of this month, most likely. Um, and then, I, I, hopefully the people that are listening and watching will let us know what they want. Because, also let us know what you think about John's minis and movies. Because that's something that he likes doing. And if you want to hear something, or you want him to suffer through a movie, well, make sure you tell him. Yeah, tell me now, because I've got quite a few before I have a free moment. Because I am in the middle of the Avengers Initiative. And I'm only just now getting up to Guardians of the Galaxy. There are a ton of Marvel movies. Holy crap! Don't even realize. Yarp. But yeah, at least they're. I mean, they're all fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Even if you're a little bit of a downer, I've passed both of the bad ones, being the Hulk and Thor two. Those are both in the rearview mirror. So it's all poses <laughs> from here, and and those aren't even that bad. No. No, I think Thor 2 is good in so many ways, but it's like, it, I feel like as a movie, it, it paved the way for Guardians of the Galaxy, because they get to have a little bit more fun in that movie, but they still try to be dark and brooding, and like, eh, miss. Yeah, they, I feel like that movie was a, we don't know what to do with Thor, so let's set up a bunch of stuff and try and, and, and you know, just tell the best Thor story we can with setting up other stuff. Yeah. Which, mm-hmm. unlike the Captain America movies, which do it so damn well, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it's, just, it's just a mess. I mean, it happens. It's always been Thor has always been a tough guy to write. Thor. Yep. Yeah. He's a god. Yeah. And and they they really painted themselves in a corner with the no magic thing that eventually they reverse because Doctor Strange has to have magic. Yeah. yeah. But no. It, so um. It's okay. So go ahead. It, it really gives you a new perspective on the things, you know. You sit there and you can look for different things and, and get different ideas. Like, uh, like the Iron Man series is a really good character progression. Like, of the movies, I like that those are the only ones with the numbers, Iron Man 1, 2, and 3, because that's the only one where it's a l- literal progression. Mm-hmm. Other things happen. You don't need to know so much what happens in other movies. You just can progress, and you'll be okay. And you'll see... It, it's the the Tony Stark story, which continues on, but that's the main arc of him, of his self discovery, discovery and changes. Oh, there you go, Alpha Recon. That's what you have to do. It's on YouTube. Congo is demanding you review that. Oh Jesus, I. Well, I got two days off this week, so maybe. But I'm 
No. No, wait, no. I'm not I'm not watching emoji movie for my birthday. That's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> if you are a fifteen dollar subscriber to Patreon, you get to suff make John suffer through the emoji movie. <laughs> absolutely. It, it, I'll say if you're if you're a high enough level patron at all, you can absolutely send movies to me that I will absolutely do a movie review on for everyone to listen to. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to like it, but I'll do that for you guys. That's what you want. I know people like to hear me rant. I, I know John said that uh, me ranting on Star Wars Episode Three was some of the best reactions we had to it because I kind of crucified that movie. That was not gentle. Oh. Yeah, because we got, let's see, um, what else? Seth, you got a new painting video coming up next week, possibly? Uh, so, definitely. It's, uh, essentially, I've just got to finish the audio, but we're going to, I'm doing the last two videos of how to paint an army in three months. They're going to be up this month and next month. So, last month we talked about how you use assembly line painting to sort of get through everything, and actually I'm doing some assembly line painting right now as I'm working on, um, models for the last of the three videos. Um, the video that will be coming up this week is on how do you pick the right colors for your army so that you're set up well for the speed painting and the end. Um, so a lot of people ask about color theory, how do you know what you're supposed to have, what do you care about, why does it matter when you're building your army, and so that's that's this one. It's taken a long time to sort of break down to the essentials, but I think people are going to really enjoy it. I I feel like, based on what some guys I, I, I know said, you should do a video on the color wheel and how important it is to have one and use mm. it when you're when you're doing stuff. Because one of the guys yeah. at the local store, they have one for sale, and he's like, what the shit do I need that for? I know colors. I'm like, no, man. This is actually important. Yep. But he wasn't having none of it. Yeah, and to a certain extent, this is going to be the first of that where it explains... What is the color wheel? Why do we use it? Why do artists use it when they're thinking about painting an army? Because, hey, little tiny men, shouldn't those just be fun? Um, and they should be, but you also are trying to get a particular effect. So then next one is going to be about, now that I've got my initial colors, how do I use that color wheel to make my life easier still and still make my models look great in a very short amount of time? I'll be honest. Color scheme is my biggest problem. I get a color scheme down... I'm fine. I can paint paint plenty of stuff. Until that point, I'm like, ah, uh, what do I do? A, a couple of years ago, I actually made friends with a guy who is colorblind. Um, he's red, green, colorblind. So he and I talked about how to use the names on the color wheel to, to figure out a good paint scheme. Um, and he now designs his own paint schemes from top to bottom. He'll still have people like double check, is this the color I think it is? Because, you know, how coal black versus exile blue doesn't really help him. Um, Fair. Yeah. But in general, it's great. Color wheel is huge. Yeah. And that would actually to, point, to make the point, I'm painting. Here's mine. It is directly in front of me. Boom. Boom. Shaka laka laka. Thank uh, you, guys. Shaka laka la. Oh. Hey, guys. Are we make sure. Um, are we sounding okay in there? Because we had issues last week uh, before we go to the full thing. So, if we don't sound good, make sure you let us know, Congo or Crimson. Um, anybody else that's listening that's not in the chat channel, Absolutely. get in there, yell at us, tell us we're stupid, change up stuff. I don't care. Absolutely. Oh, so, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I played a new uh, board game. Ooh. Um, the guys uh, brought a bunch back from uh, uh, Gen Con, and one of them was The Captain is Dead. <laughs> I like the title. That's funny. Um, it's basically like a pandemic game, but it plays faster and is... is I, I feel like it's a bit more enjoyable than Pandemic. You know, you could put... We played two games in about the time it would probably take to play maybe one game of Pandemic. <laughs> That's good. And uh, very much... And uh, my buddy Dave, who uh, is... He doesn't like that... Um, that style of games, he said he thinks it is the best of the pandemic style team games that 
doesn't uh, you know that, that doesn't have a lot of table generalship which is good that's nice because because it's so easy to end up with a uh, with with a table general thing, and that's just not good. Or as I call them, Der Dice Führer. Yeah, Der Dice Führer is a good way of putting it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we actually played a deck builder too, where you're all like cults of uh, you're like you, you know evil cults, and you're recording people to 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 summon the Dark Lord and. Uh, and basically gain his uh, support by the time he shows up and an Armageddon happens so that you win. Mm -hmm. um, I do not remember for the life of me the name of the game, though. So I am trying to find it. Um, it's pretty new. Uh, it is one of my favorite deck builders I've played recently. I mean, cool. fair, I love Star Realms. Star Realms is a great, simple, probably the best two-player deck builder, which... Probably because they got some guys who were involved with Magic uh, helped design it, but this was great. We played three uh, three player, and it had a lot of a lot of flow to it. So uh, I was very impressed with it and uh, enjoyed the hell out of it. Mm. Oh, gentlemen, as I am painting, um, and I've been having some internet issues. If anybody asks anything in the chat at me, could you go ahead and just um, let me know? Because I am not going to try to stream Twitch as well tonight. Oh, slacker. Yeah, well, it's that or I have a feeling I'm going to drop out a bunch, and that's no good either. Yeah, that's no fun. Yep. So you'll be John for the night. Oh, shots fired. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're fair and warranted shots, but they are still shots. <laughs> but I, all I'm going to say is let's not, get, let's not get drastic here. Let's... Oh, damn. <laughs> More shots fired. Shots We've coming missed my you. way. Not really. Those shots hit the mark. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Let me see if... Congo says he's going to ask you all the questions. Excellent. I will answer all the questions with the brush in my mouth. Go for it. Go! His, his, his first question is, where do babies come from? So, I've answered this question many times. When you take an ovary and you put it in a baked potato, put it in the microwave, minute, 30 seconds, take it out, open, baby! Uh, what about the nine months thing? No, that's, that's, that's a myth. Oh, it's a myth. That's a myth. Minute, 30 seconds? Minute, and 30 seconds, baked potato. Uh, <laughs> if my daughter ever hears this story, she's going to, she'll, if she hears this episode, she's going to be so pissed at me. Because there was a night at the dinner table where she was about five, and she was asking all of the questions, and we were answering all the questions. And even though we'd answer the questions, she wasn't listening, so she just asked them again. And then she like looks at us and goes, "What would happen if you put an ovary in a baked potato?" And we we're like, <laughs> minute and a half in the microwave, baby. She's like, "Wow, really? I'm like, no, stop it, stop talking." <laughs> Wow. It reminds me of uh, the uh, Calvin and Hobbes when his dad always gives him the wrong answers. Mm -hmm. Like why? Why all the pit? Why all? Why were all the pictures black and white when he were taking them? Mm -hmm. He's like, it's because the world was black and white, and we just recently we got color. <laughs> A new invention. Yep. Colored world. Um, here we go. Actually, Congo's got one. Another one. Where do dwarfs come from, and why are elves elves? Hmm. How dark do I want to go? <laughs> it's a pre-ramble. Go as dark as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, dwarves happened. No, we'll start with elves. Elves happened because somebody knew they wanted to be emo, but they didn't know how to do it yet. So they got some sparkles, they got some funny eyeliner, did the eyebrows, and went to town. And of course, that around sounds fair. Dwarves involves people with uh, no knees. Cut them off. No knees? Yeah, you just cut them off at the knees and put boots on them and start walking. Dwarves are not born, they are made. Okay. Alright, the next one is the Scale 75 Ink City set. Do you use it? And is it just me or does it taste even worse than GW Shades? Uh, let me see if I can answer that question. 
think. So you're uh, really gonna, are you really going to taste some of it right now? Well, I need to. We need to know. Okay. I, I'm I'm looking at my collection of scale seventy fives. Uh, trying to figure out where I put my intensity. Oh, Which, I'm an I've heard good things about. To be honest. Okay. So, on my desk, the intensity set. Um, I really like it. It's. Good color, good coverage. The body is good. You don't have to shake it nearly as long as their other stuff. Here's their ink tense blue. Mm. I don't have any GW shades, but I do have some army painter on my desk. Um, what I like about it is that, unlike a lot of the inks out there, it dries fairly matte. It's not quite. It's not still satin, but it's pretty dry. Uh, it's pretty matte when it's dry. And let's see, how's it taste? Uh, I'm so sorry. I have a cold. I can't taste anything right now. Ah. Judgment out. <laughs> I am drinking. I am drinking exceptionally spicy ginger tea tonight, just so I can breathe, and I can't taste it at all. Oh, well played. That's Next question. That's you out. Next question. Control. Congo the Jordanman says, "If you snort paint, do you learn the color wheel faster?" No, no. But if you snort paint, you'll taste it. <laughs> you will taste it for a long time. Most of your most of your taste receptors are actually up in the sinuses in the back of the mouth. So keep that in mind. If you snort enough paint, you get a blockage, then you get to blow it out. But if you do it right and you do layers, you can get a rainbow. Wait, is that why my ex got so upset when I made her I made her shoot Listerine out of her nose because I told a joke? <laughs> oh, that would have hurt. <laughs> yeah, she Holy was crap. she was not pleased. I didn't know she was using Listerine. I just came by and told a joke came to mind, and then out the nose. And next thing you know, I'm in the doghouse. Yeah, that that's grounds for some domestic abuse. Not like a lot yeah. of domestic abuse, but you you know, like a, that's well, a big, mean, like slap on the shoulder. She did end up divorcing me, so I mean. <laughs> Over Listerine at the nose? She doesn't deserve you. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage advice. We don't have it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I've been married. I've had an unsuccessful marriage and a successful marriage so far. So far, as we say. She's going to bring me dinner in a little bit. I am winning. <laughs> That Tell her she can't bring it until like seven fifteen, our time, our yeah, your podcast time. Uh, <laughs> podcast time. <laughs> I will, I will, I will find out when she, uh, when the food arrives. Remember, you gotta let me know when she's here. She likes to sneak in. Uh, here's a good hint: all successful marriages are only successful right now. <laughs> Hopefully, they stay that way forever. But you know, for now, only for now. Congo wants to pick one of our next one of our next factions. He wants to, we can pick uh, the system, but he can pick the faction of the first model. Uh, I feel like that should be uh, well. He is he he is a uh, patron, so I feel like we could let him do that. But I'm is scared. he buying me the faction? No, okay. I don't think so. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I I got my horde faction. I got my war machine faction. I don't have any other mini. Actually, I am picking up a new miniature game. Oh What's shit. Up? And we will hear about that when we go live on the new show. And I'm picking it up because I thought it was really cool. And I saw the models, and I was like, damn, that looks cool. Okay, be honest. Is it Robotech? I already own Robotech. I'm already in that fucking Kickstarter. I'm in that Kickstarter, too, but I do not own any models. Hence why I don't like talking about it. I have that, and um, I'm waiting for my Wave 2. <laughs> yep. Everything I'm supposed to be getting is in wave two. Five years later, I think now. I, I, I count it as a lost Kickstarter. Like, oh, that one didn't they, they do anything. Done. Uh, actually, they did do a bunch of updates recently. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a new guy there and reading it, and he's actually showing pictures and going through stuff and trying to be awesome, but we never know how that's going to happen. So it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Until mm -hmm. models show up. It's a failed Kickstarter. Yep. 
All right, we're guys. We're gonna go and shut this down real quick and restart it back up. Make sure you refresh your browser. That way, we can get everything started up natural. I will talk about the new game that I'm gonna be trying out uh, and the new faction I'm gonna pick for that. Um, other than that, we will be right back.